Like, are you serious? Are you serious right now? Do you see that feature, that add to library feature? Like, almost one of the coolest features in the Logos 10 upgrade. And I say almost because it's just, it's just missing one important piece. And, and we're gonna talk about it, but first, welcome to the video. Today, I wanna talk to you about the latest version of Logos, Logos 10, and or Lagos. I think it's actually Lagos. I always say log, it doesn't matter. I'm shooting this video before the release. I was fortunate enough to get my hands on it ahead of time. So I just, I wanna be able to get this out quickly so that as soon as it's available and I can publish this, you can determine from someone other than Logos themselves if it's worth your time and money because it's it can be expensive, right? Depending on your package. So maybe it's not worth it for you, maybe it is. We're gonna talk about it. Don't worry, this isn't sponsored by them, so you'll get my honest opinion. But real quick, if you are new, Logos is basically the most all-encompassing Bible software on the market that allows you to study the word, conduct research, do daily devotionals, prep sermons if you're a pastor, academic studies if you're a student, or just a gamut of other things. It's just, it's mind blowing if you've never looked into it. Think of it like taking a theologian's bookshelf and basically like stuffing it into a computer that allows you to research that entire library at once, but also brings like timelines and maps and just just all sorts of stuff. Now, if that sounds too intense and you're like, I'm, I'm not a pastor, bro, I don't need all of that. It, like, don't, don't let it be overwhelming. It's totally scalable. Bottom line, if you enjoy being in the word, Logos is an amazing asset that I would really recommend to anybody that can afford it. Check out their website. There's some less expensive options all the way up to some extremely expensive options. So figure out what's good for you. All right, so let's dig into Logos 10 specifically. For this this theme, if you will, for Logos 10, they're calling it their like back to the basics on what it means to, to live in the word. So they're going for faster speeds, ease of use, which we're gonna get into because there's some awesome feature upgrades there. And then it's it's overall stability. So let's go ahead. We're just gonna jump in so you can get a look. First thing you're really gonna notice is the face of the software. is uh, It's been kind of updated, but it's still the same. Like you're not gonna have any issues finding what you normally look for. But obviously the first big thing you notice is the, the toolbar off here to the left, whereas it used to be on top. I'm gonna be honest with you. When I saw that, I was like, oh, that's kind of a cool upgrade. I'm changing that back right away. And, and as I, I started to use the software and I was like, ah, I should give it a chance, like go with the features they're giving me instead of just trying to go back to what I'm used to. And uh, I gotta be honest, I, I love it. I'm, I don't see switching it back anytime soon now. I was very skeptical. So first is the fact that you can shrink it. This little guy down here, I can just shrink it, get it out of the way. That, that helps a ton. And I really love being able to get that screen real estate back, especially if I just have my laptop with me but the ability to then expand it back out is great. And, and what I've come to realize is having it this way flows really good with the way we normally use logos. So for example, let me just open uh, this here. We'll get a bunch of tabs open. If you'll notice, they all are columns, essentially. Right? Everything kind of fits in a column manner when you're looking at your material. Your highlights are over here. Same thing as your toolbar on the left. It's just got this, this column setup. It flows with it really well. For me, I, I think that's great. Again, I was very skeptical. I was like, I'm not using that. That's trash. Love it. So logos, good job. I was wrong. All right, so that aside, as you can see the face, like, there's some like minor updates to just the way the tabs sit and the rounding. It's a little more appealing to the eyes. Nothing massive though. Like as far as it goes and is moving around the software and where things normally are, 99% of that is pretty much the same. If you already are used to logos, you're not gonna have to like learn any new insane processes to just pick up where you left off in Logos 9. All right, but that's all really like cosmetic stuff, right? Like you're probably not gonna buy Logos 10 just because you can put the sidebar on the left and they churched it up a little bit more. So really, I wanna focus in on a few specific features that I think might help you decide if upgrading to Logos 10 is really for you or not without like their sales pitchiness behind it because this isn't sponsored by Logos. I do have an affiliate link down below. So if you do purchase it, I would love if you use that link because it helps support the channel, but this is an honest review. I'm not being paid by them to do the video. So first big feature is in the library. I noticed right away this add to library feature. And what this is, come to find out, this is an amazing feature. What this allows you to do is add your print books into your Logos library. Essentially, the reason that you would do this is it allows you to search and find things within your print books and then go reference them. So it's not actually giving you a free version of the digital copy. Let me let me explain. So let's pick a book. I haven't done this with a lot of books yet. 
Um, in fact, let me just go grab a book. Let me grab one. So uh, I haven't really got a lot of the books in here yet. We'll just add this one if from, I actually just got this one at uh, Bethlehem, just had a conference. Godward Life. Yeah, that was the name of it. It was a good, good conference. Uh, anyway, they gave us uh, a copy of this book. It's a 30 edition of Let the Nations Be Glad by John Piper. Let's just go ahead and add it in here. Let the nations be glad. And there we go. So it's right here. So I hit add to print library. And now it will actually show up in my library. And it's got this little icon here that shows you, oh, hey, just so you know, this is, uh, this is from your print library. And then you can remove it if you don't want them to show up in there anymore. So they're in there, that's cool. I guess it kind of shows you that it's there, but where this really comes in handy. So let's go to the search. And then in here, just the overall search, we're gonna come back to this because this is uh, the search is amazing. Okay, so I just added, um, let's start with Jesus. And it talks a lot about the familiar, the familial metaphor within the Bible. So let's search for that. And as you see, as we come down here, start to look at all our search results. Again, this is just all of the search results Logos is bringing in. Check it out right here. So there's the book. I own this in a physical copy. I was part of one of my classes. So I, I have this physical copy and you can see right here, it's a print library book. It shows it's in the library. Here's, if you saw at the beginning of this video, I alluded to where it's missing one important feature. That's great. But like now I have to go dig through this book, right? And here's where I don't understand. After I filmed that, I went and uh, I was looking at this, right? So I, we just added that, check this out. Here's what's crazy. So let's just find something in this book. Let's go with, um, uh, let's find something that would just pop up in a search. Why not be like Raymond Lull? I actually don't know who Raymond Lull is, but let's just search for uh, Raymond Lull. We're about to find out. Raymond Lull. All right, so we're gonna search for him. All right, why not be like Raymond Lull? It's the second thing that shows up in our search results, as we can see down here on the right side from my print library book. Okay, it's from the book, Let the Nations Be Glad, The Supremacy of God and Missions. And it's on page 99. It references it 12 times. So if I go to page 99, boom. Why not be like Raymond Law? I mean, that's, that's amazing. And at the beginning where I was like, it's missing one important feature. That was the feature from the time I shot that to started inputting this, this showed up. So here's what I can't tell you how many books that's gonna work for. Because as we talked about with, let's start with Jesus, it doesn't reference any page numbers. Now Logos has digital copies of both of those books. So what separates while one is gonna tell you which page it talks about it and another one isn't, I, I don't know. So how well that's gonna work in honing in the page numbers, I don't yet have enough information to tell you just cause I don't have, I haven't ran this test enough times to figure out if it, you know, whatever, 85% of the time it'll give you a page number and 15% it won't or however that's gonna work. But the fact that at least for some books, it will even hone in the page number is amazing. And even without that, still a great feature because at least then you're like, oh, I know exactly what book I need to go find on my bookshelf. Awesome, I just like, I love that feature. And the fact that it for at least some books, it will go to the page number and tell you where to go. Like, that's, that's amazing, that's amazing. All right, so next up, Let's talk about search because we're already in the search because here's the deal. The, so the search is probably the biggest update, like the most impactful update to all of Logos 10, at least that I've been able to discover this thus far. It, it's just been massively overhauled. There's no need for syntax anymore. At least you shouldn't hopefully need syntax anymore. And if you're not sure what syntax is when you're searching, uh, don't worry about it now because you don't you don't really need to use it that much. But uh, it, it's really, it's used to help you narrow down a search. So you could just like type in this and this minus this, or you put things in quotations and then you, you add an and and an if and an or. Bottom line, you basically had to know certain things to be able to get the search results you wanted. And those things sometimes were very advanced. In fact, I'm, I'm a member of uh, Logos Daily Circle and on their Facebook page, it's like one of the most common questions. I'm trying to search for this, but it's not coming up, how do I do it? And then a couple of people much smarter than myself always pipe in with, hey, type this exactly into your search bar and it should give you what you want. But you don't need to do that anymore. And by the way, Logos Daily Circle, I'll put a link for them down below as well. If you use Logos or you're thinking about getting into Logos, just a great group of individuals that know the software. I mean, so many of them know just so much more about it than I do. Some of them 
are just like geniuses in the software, but great group of people to learn more about things, ask questions. Uh, yeah, I'll link it down below. Bottom line, the search is so much better than it used to be. Let me jump into the app and I'll show you a couple of things. If we just, again, if we just open up our search bar, you're gonna notice right off the bat, it looks different. And this is what's great. You've got this all up here. And then of course you can go Bible, books, media, whatever. The, the point is, see, you still have syntax. So if you wanna start using some of the syntax stuff, it's right there. I don't know that much about it. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know that much about syntax. Now it's so much easier because the search is just better overall. So here's a couple examples of how you can do it. You know, you can just type in phrases and quotes, uh, use love or neighbor, right? Like it kind of, gives you some instructions. There's a help manual in here now. And then here's what's great. I can search for this or that, or this and that, right? Like maybe I wanna search for faith as it just says in here. So we'll type in faith and then belief. I mean, it, it, it's got the search box here for you now. It totally helps you out. So it's gonna search for faith and belief where those come up together and it's gonna just pile in these resources. As you can see, the resources, they just, they just keep going and going and going and more is loading in. All right, so you can really just hone in your search. So let's get rid of that. Check this out, this before that. How cool is this? So I wanna search for truth before the word love. Search, bam. So you could see love, truth. So you could see like rather speaking the truth in love. So maybe you knew you kind of were like, ah, I need that, I know there's that Bible, Bible verse, truth in love you can just search for it that way now. I mean, it's just is amazing feature related terms, this before that. All right, so I don't wanna to go too far down the search rabbit hole because I don't want this to become a lesson in searching and bottom line, I'm not a genius in any way. I'm still learning it a lot myself, but what I can tell you is it is dramatically better. All right, but let's say you don't really use the search feature that much. It's not a big thing for you. There's a couple other smaller things that might matter for you more than they matter for me. And the first is the ability to translate almost anything. You can just highlight text and then hit a single button and it will translate it into a gamut of languages. So if you work in the ministry field overseas or even, even in your own country where you're working with people where their other language or their primary language is not the same as yours or quite possibly maybe your primary language is in English and sometimes it just helps you to read things in other languages. It's an awesome feature. It's super easy to do. You can just click it with basically one button and it translates it all for you. So that's that's pretty cool, not huge for me, but I could see how for other people that would be greatly beneficial. And then the sermon prep has a couple updates as well, the sermon tools, I should say. I don't honestly use them that much. In fact, I uh, I just gave my first sermon last Sunday, so I, I don't have a lot of experience in that, but honestly, even when I was doing that as I prepare for my next one, I just haven't really done a lot of the sermon prep work in Logos. Research, absolutely, like tons, almost all of my research in Logos but I actually prefer to use Obsidian for uh, writing papers, building sermons, things like that. But if, if you do use that, or if you think you might use that, there are a couple cool features there as well. One, which I think is nice is the sermon importer, which is a cool idea. I haven't really used it much, but let's go to sermon builder so we can open up the sermon manager. And then there is an import feature where you can actually import uh, a sermon from a Word doc. And they claim it's supposed to keep it you know, pretty, pretty accurate to its word formatting. So here's last Sunday sermon. Okay, I mean, the slides don't really totally match up, but that's to be expected. It's not gonna know that I had a slide here, right? So, but but the overall, like the headings and all of that are uh, are all where they're supposed to be. In fact, it even linked some of the, some of the Bible verses used, which is really cool. So the fact that the, actually, how does it even have the date right? I mean, that's, that's pretty impressive. So, I guess the feature here, the cool thing is if you get into logos and you're like, I have all these sermons I want to be able to reference in the future, because these will now show up and this will now show up in a search result, right? Or or at least be somewhere where I know they were all kept. So if that's you, or if you're just getting started in, in writing sermons, or you're getting started in logos, but you have a bunch of sermons you want to import, you can import them all and then they'll be there as a reference for the future. In fact, even passages that I reference uh, show up in here. That this is actually really cool. Again, I don't think that I will use this to write with or to prepare my sermons, at least not yet. Maybe it's just something I need to focus on learning better, but I will definitely be using the importer tool because I like the idea of having that there just as an ability to research it later or just as a, another spot to have it 
uh, you know, for safekeeping. Now, one other feature they do talk about is this quote feature up here where you can find quotes. Apparently you just highlight text, so let's just find, okay, so let's just pick this because the golden rule is a common word. We're so quick to judge others, how others respond to the golden rule, aren't we? So let's just, I'm curious. Let's quote it, find popular quotes. Uh, be quick to judge yourself and not to judge others. Sources unknown, I'm sure. The golden rule would reconcile capital and labor, all political contention and uproar, all selfishness and greed. Okay, not really applicable, but I mean, this is pretty cool. Like there's a lot of quote, like here's one by N.T. Wright. Again, not really applicable for what I'm talking about there, but it's a cool feature. I mean, I could see how if you're looking for quotes, especially if maybe you selected a better piece of text that you wanted to find a quote on, how that would be uh, just a really cool, cool feature. All right, so that's really all I wanna talk about in the software itself. But before I get to uh, what I believe on, if you should upgrade or what my recommendation is, I do wanna mention as well, they have a new mobile app coming out or out, depending on when you watch this video. Uh, I've been playing with that too. Massive improvements for the mobile app, guys. Like if you are if you have been harping on the mobile app and its inability to work well, uh, check it out, go update the app, or, or at least keep an eye on when it's gonna be available for whatever device you're on. It should be really soon if, if it's not by the time you watch this video. Uh, I was just talking to someone about how the highlighter tool in the typical Android and I think Apple uh, app is just trash. It's just not it, like the process to highlight something is not good. So that has been dramatically upgraded, making it a much better process to use the highlighter feature. And then just the tabs and the way things link. Again, probably its own video I should do, but just know that it's being upgraded or it has been upgraded depending on when you watch this video and you should definitely go make sure you have the most up-to-date copy if uh, if your phone's not auto-updating your apps. Because again, the cool thing is, even if you don't upgrade to Logos 10, the app you should still get without having to pay anything. So the question is, should you upgrade to Logos 10? And the answer is, maybe. Now hear me out, because I realize that's, that's a terrible answer to give. But here's the deal, if you're in a financial situation to where it's it's not a huge concern, you can afford it without an issue, then yeah, it might be worth the upgrade. And if if you do regular research, you're a student, a pastor, a teacher, like any of that stuff, yeah, it's probably worth the upgrade then just because the research capabilities are so vastly improved. But do you need to go from Logos 9 to Logos 10? Absolutely not. Like if you don't care a lot about research, if you're like, hey, I just like to read the Bible, I have a couple commentaries open, I do some highlighting, I like to have it all sync up together, then no, you, you don't need to upgrade to Logos 10. Like it's not so significant for you. But if you do a lot of research, if you want to be able to add your print library, things like that, that's where it's really the payoff is is going to be. Now, if you're coming into Logos fresh, so you're going to end up getting Logos 10 because that's what's available. And this actually applies for people that are upgrading as well. Just realize that Logos, one of their greatest features is their dynamic pricing. So you don't have to overextend yourself or buy into something that you're not totally sold on, right? You can buy lower tier packages or or just the base software and, and, and build up over time. You can even add to the software, right? So, so their dynamic pricing works in a way to where you're not just gonna have to rebuy the same stuff you already own. If you buy a package or part of the software package and then you're like, man, I just, I really want that next thing. Their dynamic pricing is set up in a way that, that you will just pay less for that next package. Does that make sense? It's it's easier to just see it on their website, but basically you don't have to repay for what you've already bought, which works, just works phenomenal when you're trying to build your library and your software up over time. So, hey, I hope this video was helpful. Again, check the link, learn more, do some research, figure out if it's for you. But I, I do hope this was helpful in, in helping you along the way as you, as you determine if you should be spending the money on this package. So thanks for watching and enjoy studying the word of God.